Weight Free Wellness Podcast number seven. Welcome to the Weight Free Wellness Podcast, helping you through the ups and downs with weight, self image, and health, sharing resources, interviews with experts, and inspirational personal stories. Since our relationships affect our overall well being so greatly, I wanted to discuss common pet peeves between partners and committed relationships in this episode with my hubby, John Bachland. We playfully discuss and drive home a few points from our observations and 16-year relationship together. Listen for the gems is all with the intention to help. Also, this is an early recording, so please forgive any faux pas. And if you're watching the video of this episode, you'll notice that instead of video, there is essentially a slideshow of me and John, our entertaining cats, and a few other fun pictures. You can find this and also get the show notes at weightfreewellness.com. Enjoy. Well, good evening, John. Thanks for joining me again. It's good to have you here. Oh, I'm supposed to say something. Well, right. as an opening, I mean, I might good as well evening, jump in. Tara. And remember, this is, I'm intending on making this a G rated podcast. G, all right. Really hoping. Now, we're going to be talking about couples and relationship stuff. Oh, man. So sometimes it's difficult to keep it rated. G. Geez. Maybe uh, at Good. least at least no swear words. Goodness <laughs> gracious. To, yes. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna use a bunch of G words because it's G rated. You go for that. Golly. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh. This is gonna be great. <laughs> <laughs> is that trademarked? Like, can we use that? I, I, that I don't know. Can you trademark? No, you can copyright a sound like a song. Sure. Wouldn't it be something like that? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for going with me there. I'm rolling. Yeah. Rolling with the punches. Uh, good hubby tip number one. Just go with it. Roll with it. Yes. So I came home today. No, you came home. I was already home. <laughs> I don't know why I mixed that those two up. <laughs> and I said, hey, will you record a podcast with me today? And you're like, sure, honey, I'd love to. Yep. And you're the same intonation and everything. And... My uh, voice was that high, too. I didn't even tell you what the subject was going to be, and you were already into I'm, it. So I'm into really it. Cool. I'm into it. So thank you. Well, it is, I think you'll really appreciate this, because as a Leo, I am asking your opinion. And Leos will tell you their opinion, even if you, you don't, don't ask. Even if you ask. <laughs> right. Or don't ask, yeah. <laughs> so, better yet, I'm asking you. That's because there's so much going on in the head of a Leo we think that you asked because we were thinking it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. And we think that you want to know because we were thinking it. Mm-hmm. Yep, so, probably. Yeah. So what's the topic again? The topic is in a couple's relationships, in a committed relationship, what is it that peeves the other sex? And so obviously we... Pet peeves? Pe or just normal peeves? Well, I think it's going to be different for everybody, too. So I think we're going to end up bringing up more so our own or what we've heard from other couples because we do end up hearing from friends and, and so forth or what's, you know, if they're trying to work through something. Mm -hmm. So this is obviously going to be biased to what has gone on between us, what we've worked through and what we've heard. And I'd like to maybe even look up a few things online to see if there's something that we missed that... We just didn't even realize. I'm already kind of scrolling through stuff. So. Well, you know, it's funny because I looked it up real quick too, briefly, obviously, because the keywords I used were not very helpful because I actually ended up getting like dating sites uh, <laughs> um, articles. And I was thinking, wow, this really does not apply to us. Like that has never come up in our relationship, really. Well, we've been together and married for like 16 years and I'm looking through some of these and I'm like that doesn't make sense like one of them was um, you like to play coy and I'm like mm, I think sometimes he likes it when I play coy of course <laughs> yes. um, but in a dating circumstance they're saying you you know guys just want to know if you're into them and don't just play around you know don't just keep playing around yeah that's for that's pre-relationship right <laughs> 
You know, but there is a limit too when you're in a relationship to playing coy. I mean, you don't want me to just play coy and tease you and not have that lead somewhere. Usually, usually you would prefer it to lead somewhere. Sure. Yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> like to the grocery store. Right. <laughs> right. I mean, if we can go somewhere, wink, yeah, wink. <laughs> we can head out and get something done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So what did you find in your initial search? Did you type in the correct uh, keywords? There's one here that I always hear people talk about, leaving the toilet seat up. Oh. And I've never, we've never had that problem because primarily you never leave the toilet seat up. You always put it back down and I'm always very happy when that <laughs> happens. So I was properly trained. Yes. So you could say that. Yeah. No, I, I, you know, I... I have very good aim. I don't have a problem. I don't actually lift the toilet seat if I stand up and pee. So, oh, is that is that okay for G? Yeah, I think okay. that's okay for G. Okay. There might be some little boys that need that extra encouragement, you know, yeah. like it's okay to sit down. It's and, okay to aim. And it's okay to aim. Yeah. Yeah, pretend there's like little it's ships okay. in there It's or okay to understand what your stream is going to do and where it goes and how to control it. And, yes. Um, the one thing that does... Peeve, oh, we got, oh we got a new peeve. We got <laughs> good thing we're videoing this. We have a no, new peeve. I need no. this recorded because it sounds like I don't even it's know It's a about pee peeve. It. A pee peeve. A pee peeve. Okay. <laughs> and it's when you have been in a hurry or what, something. What, what if it wasn't me? Well, what if it was somebody I'm pretty else? Pretty sure it's I, you. Okay. <laughs> you know, it's just the two of us people in this household now. Okay. I have not trained the cats to use the toilet, although that might be kind of <laughs> awesome. <laughs> But, like, you know when you have to really go, and I don't know if it's the same for guys, but it's this way for girls. Like, if you really, really have to go, and you're, you're ready, to, you're pulling down your pants, and you're just like, oh, I'm going to make it. And then all of a sudden, I see that there's a few dribbles left, um, and it's yours, so. It's I'm, always me. I'm yeah. not, yeah. well, I'm not totally grossed out. I mean, if I had to get it on me, it wouldn't be the worst <laughs> thing in the world. But still, it's not something I want to so the first yeah. thing we talked about in this <laughs> podcast is you getting pee on yourself. <laughs> That's Oh, after five minutes. Oh, okay. we made it five minutes. That's kind of oh. the first topic. All right. So, well, I'm sure there's other women who are like, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I would say you are tremendously awesome in that category. So generally, where is it? On the bowl, on the seat? On where, the, it's on the very tip. And on the where, front? On the front. Okay, yep. so it's about where your legs would be parted sitting down. But when you really have to pee, so, you don't always have good aim to sit down. You know, your pants, shorts, or whatever may be not quite down <laughs> to the knees. So okay. you don't get that okay. separation. Well, I'll tell you right now, and it'll be on the record, that I will always check. That's really I, awesome. Thank yeah. you. Knuckle. That's. Is this knuckle bump we call this? Yeah. Fist give, bump. Give me some knucks. Yeah, nuts. fist bump. Some nuts. knucks. Yeah. I feel old when I have to <laughs> learn. My grandma probably knows what that's called, <laughs> and I don't. <laughs> She always seems to be hanging out with the hip young kids. Those young kids. <laughs> That's a, okay, so we covered one pet peeve. You're kind of like an old married lady. You're, Am I? Yeah, you kind of. Well, kind of settled in there. Straight. If I have '80s hair, it's because you like it. Everyone, so mm. Not because. Sorry, of there's stuff. a video that started up on my Facebook. Because you press the button. I no, I. Okay, I, keep talking. I gotta grab my list. Oh, I have to talk while you yeah. run. Okay. Um, so looking at this list of pet peeves, I don't know if I have any. I hope that during our talking here, we will come up with some pet peeves that I have. That I hope so too, because it would be very cliche if I had all the peeves and <laughs> you're right? like, honey, you're perfect. Well, I'm just going to play it I then. Yeah. Love you. <laughs> I don't think I have any. No, honestly, I'm thinking I'm, you know, and I'm looking through these lists. Okay. I'm, what else is on the list though? Uh, uh, let's see. Um, I'm getting to number. I'm gonna go to, like bait. I'm gonna go to the number one here. Okay. All the way down to number. One. Oh wait, that's a different list. One oh. all the way down to one. These websites nowadays, I gotta tell you, they're they try to bait you, and take you to a place where you don't want to go. Like talking uh, about pee. Oh well, here's a good one. Okay, this number one. Then back to the pet peeves list. Uh huh. Um, ex-spouses and boyfriends or girlfriends. Ooh, yeah, that's a good and one. And I see a lot of that in other people. Mm -hmm. um, I, me and you never had that issue. Mm -hmm. You know, we didn't talk about anybody 
really. I mean, if it, if it had to come up, it was just kind of a common sense thing that it had to come up, but it, mm -hmm. it, it uh, has never been an issue between us. Well, the great thing is, I mean, you were even married before, and you had made it very clear in those relationships that stuff was ended. Yeah. You know, there's no lingering, and I think I learned a ton about boundaries from you, and th really to me too, when a relationship was over in my past, it was over. There was no reason to really keep it going. Even though I had great relationships, I would say I was very fortunate to have really good relationships before you. And they honestly, were right. I didn't care about anybody else before me. <laughs> yeah. With you, I didn't. I didn't care and I still don't. Well, I think that's an important point though too because it, you you give it more credence the more credence you give it and you can make it bother you. That's deep. We should explore that for a little bit. Yeah. I'll take a sip of my Smittix. Yes. But, mm -hmm. but you, especially a woman, and I'm going to admit this as a woman, that I have caught myself think, you know, starting to think, well, you know, what happened in his previous relationship or whatever. I mean, you can start going down that rabbit hole. And I would catch myself and go, no, I don't want to feel this way. This feels really yucky. And I would stop myself because what it would end up doing is turning me against you, which is a poison, you know, because I would let some imaginary thoughts, nothing based on, is based on nothing. Right. And so you can either actively, by actively having someone still in your relationship, poison it, or even your thoughts. Well, we never played that game that a lot of people talk about, you know, that they have to tell each other how many people they've been with, who they've been with, talk about things they've done. And I think that's a real strange, voyeuristic kind of, it's kind of a, uh, it's a fake openness. It's not something that I think people should do. If you're going to start a new relationship with somebody, I think you should just start a new relationship. Yeah. And why plague it with your past relationships that obviously didn't work out? Right. It's, it's very simple. If you're not with a person, the relationship did not work out. And you take with you the things that you learned that you don't want to do or you don't want somebody to do to you and you move forward in a more positive fashion, you know, with, with your, with your new relationship, with your new partner, your new friend, your new spouse, if that's the case, and you go forward. Otherwise you're going backwards. The thought that that brings up for me is to me, a warning sign would be, well, when I would, I've been on dates where it was just a single date and they brought up their exes you know, and they're clearly still in that relationship mentally and emotionally. And that may not be a warning to everybody because I think that there is a draw to commiserate or to, you know, to get tied into that, you know, especially if you're both in that situation. So I think we kind of were fortuitous in the sense that we met at stages where we were both uh, either really good at transitioning or just over another relationship and so it wasn't like we needed that healing journey of going through and hopefully you have a friend or a counselor or someone you can talk with to get over a previous relationship rather than your yeah, next I, I do then your next <laughs> date you know that's are you talking to the podcast or me <laughs> an unhealthy way to start a next relationship in my opinion right. so i think there are a number of ways that that can come up and you're right that hasn't been an issue for us, thankfully. Mm -hmm. I especially have been grateful many times as I've heard women who are, were married to guys who had previous relationships, marriages in particular, especially with kids, that all this crap they have to deal with because, because of that. And it's mostly because the person who was in those prior relationships cannot create the boundaries. Exactly. So let's go to the next one. Yeah, let's. <laughs> Without, I think we should. So what to have for dinner? I, I don't think we've ever had a problem with this. You wow. know, because a lot of times we just cook what we want ourselves. So we'll be in the kitchen at the same time. And probably 80% of the time you cook dinner. But then there's 
the other 20% where you want something different than I want or our schedules didn't match up and we're hanging out together, but I'm not hungry or you're not hungry and the other person is eating or cooking their own thing. And so, okay, or I'm, you got something I'm else gonna, to say. I'm going to step in the That's trap. the way I thought it worked. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is fairly mild. In John's and world, that's what happened. <laughs> we've worked this through. Uh, I would be preparing a full dinner, you know, not just like making spaghetti, but like... You know, roast chicken with mashed potatoes and gravy. Oh, I know where you're going. And, and I want something else. And <laughs> you've already, in your mind, created other plans. Or you've eaten beforehand. Or you had a late lunch. You're, you know. And so I took it upon yeah. myself, for, for one, to let you know when I'm preparing a bigger dinner. Mm -hmm. And Is you, this a peeve? Are you peeving? No, no, this is something we've resolved. It oh. used to be a peeve oh. because I spent hours literally preparing something with the intentions of you really enjoying it. And I wanted to go out. And you wanted to go out or or had already eaten shortly before that mm. or something. Uh, so we worked through that knuckle fist bump on that one. Nice job, baby. Should we, should we blow it up? Should we do it? Yeah, nice stuff. Yeah. We're not we're not knock practiced. We're not good at the knocks. No, and it's really a visual thing. So only if you're watching this can you see it, and it's really cool. Otherwise, you're just hearing us talk about it's it. It's really cool. <laughs> Something okay, we do that's so really cool. I've got two of the three peeves. So dinner. Um, I never had any peeves about it. You know, or breakfast or lunch either. No, no that was. I'm pretty easy going when it comes to food. I do like my food good, really good, healthy food. Mm -hmm. Pretty easy going about it. And usually when we're going out to eat, we can agree upon where to go. Mm -hmm. I got another one. Let's talk about movies. What movie to watch? Now I want you to, I know this is not a peeve either way, because I know you don't necessarily appreciate sci-fi or every time there's really cool every single action movie that comes out that's awesome you Dude, don't you i'm don't. so excited for the next one which is going to be really really awesome and, it and it's is going to what? Uh, <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> right that was my point right. <laughs> but i'd like you to talk about how many times that i say let's pick a movie that you like and i find a what traditionally would be called a chick flick but it, It'd be couples cinema. Okay. Well, not only do you offer it 22 times a month, <laughs> exactly, but you will usually find one. Yes. And it's very good. Yes. Like, it's the creme de la creme of right. chick flicks. Because I can't stand crappy movies. And you will go, you know, 5, 10, 15 minutes looking for one. Yes. For me. Well, and I match it to your mood. <laughs> yes, I, I do. Yes, okay. I do. Wow. I, when I hear how your day was and I hear what you're thinking about, and then I match the movie to your mood, and that's oh why goodness. you always like them. <laughs> that's pretty awesome. I have a really big grin on my face. <laughs> that's about, that's, that's, I got a kitty pug yeah. bump. Yeah, that's so if there's any guys listen to this, brownie points. Oh. That's how you do it. Totally. I didn't even know you were doing that for so long. And no, it's been 16 years. So yeah. you have always had... Before Netflix, you were doing that? Yes. You've always had an excellent movie life with me. <laughs> That's true. Yes. That's very true. Yeah. yeah. Well, I've seen hundreds more movies than I would have ever seen <laughs> without you. <laughs> yeah. Um, and we, we have won't talk about how We won't talk about how big my iTunes library is. <laughs> Uh, snoring. I, I know that every now and then I snore like if I'm really zonked out and I have felt you push on my shoulder um, a few times. It doesn't bother me, mm -hmm. but I've woke up a couple times and be like, what are you doing? And you're like, you're snoring. And I say it just like that. You're snoring. <laughs> it just gets this really. And then I'm awake because you talk like that. <laughs> Well, I don't know why your cat doesn't seem to be bothered. <laughs> it's more vibration for her to 
stay sleeping. <laughs> okay, so you say that I've never snored, and I don't think I have, but there have been a couple of times we've had really hard bike rides or something, and I could have potentially been snoring, but you've been very good. No, at I, not was, I will say what you do do. <laughs> what you do. We're, <laughs> what you do? Uh, we're, we're talking about pee later, and now here's what you do do. <laughs> so you go. <laughs> 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 and almost every time you wake yourself up <laughs> and it's just a very short one thing and I'll, I'll hear you breathe you'll be like <sighs> and then you'll be like <sighs> <laughs> yeah it's awesome it's cute it's something i know about you and nobody else knows no one else knows <laughs> except for those that listen to this podcast well it's either sleeping with my eyes open or occasionally letting out this fog light fog horn sound <laughs> it's not that bad it's not like <laughs> <laughs> okay. yes you, you, well, you don't sleep with your up. eyes open anymore but you used to <laughs> and that was the funniest thing that i had ever seen to that point when right. i first saw it and when i first saw it we didn't have smartphones so there oh, was yeah. no camera on my phone and i think i actually <laughs> the first time i saw it i think i had a motorola um star tack without a camera and so i was like you know there was no taking a picture of it right. and it would have been grainy as heck and yeah. <laughs> i think there's one on here uh, the title is The In-Laws. I think we should save that for like a series of podcasts. Yeah. I don't think we should get into that. <laughs> yep. That will, we have a, a members section. That might be a members section. I will just say for the people listening that part of the reason we're so happy and we get along so good is because, speaking of in-laws, because we depend on each other so much for many, 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 many things. Yep. We have so. all our eggs in one basket with each other. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. So stay alive. <laughs> Are you talking to me? Yes. Oh, let's hit housework. Ooh, good housework. One. All right, you start. Um. <laughs> well. Um. Uh, I I know there's a few peeves. Hey, sorry, you can't do the microphone. <laughs> sorry, he was trying to contribute. <laughs> um. I tend to leave. You I, seem to be very careful I'm about how you're formulating this. I don't know how to say it. I <laughs> I tend to leave my stuff in little piles. Yes. And Many so, little piles. Yes. Yeah, sometimes they can become larger piles. Yeah. Um, and I know that you, you never complain about this, but I leave my socks on the floor. Yeah. Like in the living room or maybe in the kitchen or <laughs> something like counter. that. On the counter. On the counter. I've done that. Yeah. And you, you never complain. And I appreciate that. And, and, but the piles that I leave, sometimes you ask me to clean them up and I get irritated. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I waited usually at least one day. Oh, a few usually days. Usually yeah, two. I'll, I'll give you a couple days. Yeah, at least. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you get irritated. Well, I don't get irritated at you. I just, I'm just to have a general irritation about it because... I like to leave my stuff where I left it yep. so that I know where it is. And if I need it within the next three months or so, <laughs> I, then, Reasonable time period. <laughs> I then can go to that small mass of John's stuff mm -hmm. and pull out what I need and leave the rest. <laughs> yes. Yes. Your cat really loves it though, too. I mean, she... Uh, the clothes. Just, oh, my goodness. The socks, especially. And underwear. Oh, I, yeah. I don't leave underwear in the living room or the kitchen. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's tastefully left in the bedroom. <laughs> right. <laughs> where it should be. Right. Yep. Huh. Okay. Yeah, so housework. Yep. <laughs> oh, that's housework. Yep. Um, so generally, you take housework. care of the housework. Um, you do the dishes. A lot of times I cook and you do the dishes. That's good. I, I, like, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> a lot of the times you contribute a lot. To what? Cooking. <laughs> yes. And I should really enlist you. I'm very good with your... prep. And clean up. And I, yeah, I, I, could, clean up. I could really be better about enlisting your help with that. I can clean up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Is, is, that a dead is that a dead topic? So housework, um, sometimes 
Like, I think in my mind that, like, in the winter and a rainy day, I'm going to be able to wrangle you up and say, hey, let's clean this closet. Or, hey, let's, you know, tidy up the basement. And first of all, I have to get myself all gung-ho. And then I have to think of, hmm, how am I going to be coy and yeah, entice my husband into helping do this housework? You're a John Wrangler, huh? <laughs> yes. Well, sometimes. So... That doesn't always happen, and I'm not sure how to really, really capitalize on it. I, because I, for one, I don't want to treat you like a kid. Right. And we've discussed that in, <laughs> in other ways. Thing. Yeah. That you know, I don't want to say, okay, Johnny, let's take twenty minutes and go to your closet. Did you clean up your room when you know it's not clean? That one too. That one's bad. That so one is so bad. Not your room, just like. Your stuff. Yeah, chasing your husband around, checking up on him, and then asking questions you know the answers to. That I I see that in a lot of relationships, and I see a lot of problems because of that. That's so just I a really, bad practice. So I really strive to be aware of that, uh, and there can be nuances of that. Um, but then it, the catch to that, the caveat, is that it makes it challenging to ask at times. And in our relationship, that's probably been one of my bigger challenges is in general being able to ask. And it's not necessarily anything about you. It's more about, it's me. It's not you, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> and that's one of the examples. Well, how is, can I help you with me? Oh, that's a great question. Brownie <laughs> <laughs> voice. <laughs> well... This is a bigger topic that we will talk about separately, but you've done really well, especially in the last couple years, of saying, of of helping me with that because you've pointed it out to me before. But I've fallen back into a very self conscious way of being, and I and I think, you know what? I'm gonna fix myself this time, and I'm not gonna do that, or I'm gonna not talk about it because I can fix it myself. But that. It caves in on itself. It's it's a self defeating process, and I th it seems to me. I don't remember if you said directly that over the years you've just decided that you're going to help me a little bit more with that and say, mm -hmm. "Tell me more," essentially. And that first of all is extremely generous because I know in other examples when I've tried to turn the tables and work with you. Um, which is not very often, but I try to be there for you on certain things. It takes tremendous patience to work with someone through their pro proclivities, mm -hmm. especially when it can have an effect directly on you. So a long answer to your question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was the question? <laughs> the, the question was, how can I help you help, help with me? Yeah. And you've been doing that which is being more receptive. So when it naturally would tick you off, you I notice whether you have just been taking a breath and realizing I'm, I am asking in a, in a legitimately genuine way mm -hmm. um, and also at times just opening up. And this is more general conversation or things that we're working on or I'm working on. You're opening up for discussion, but that's... A different tangent on this, but the same principle. Perfect. So that's something still coming, you know, working on, up, um, working with. But there are some areas where we've actually hired some help that we really value our time together. And so, like lawn work, which we ha we have no lawn work to really speak of, other than mowing. Um, we hire that out. There's a, someone in our neighborhood that does it very reasonably. Uh, and I do have someone, we do have someone who comes in every two weeks to do a deeper cleaning of the house. And that literally saves hours a week for right. me, which means that I can be doing stuff like this. You know, we can be going for a bike ride. It really, what it also does is when we're cooking in the kitchen or doing something in the house or you walk through with your shoes on, I'm not thinking right away, oh, I got to clean that again. But it's someone else's job. So it kind of, I don't know, it just makes it, it shifts it in my mind. Mm -hmm. 
I think we, we excellent explanation. Thanks. That was a really long explanation. Yeah. I'm gonna enjoy going back and listening to it. Great. <laughs> <laughs> it's full of brownie points. What's so next? Any well, any topics you can think of. So the idea for this podcast actually came up when today I was getting my toenails done because it's summer here right now and it's really nice to have your toenails done. And I've really only started this recently. I've gotten better at treating myself. Mm -hmm. And um, my um, pedicurist lady, she's really just great at, you know, flowing conversation and so forth. And she was telling me that her, her mom actually bought a Wii to, for her family, but her boys who are seven and four don't even know about it yet. And I'm like, you know, does your husband get into games? She's like, no, he doesn't. And I'm like, you know, I have these opinions in my mind. And my proclivity net is to naturally kind of be peeved by it. You know, I don't think that it's, when you're thinking of a family environment, it's not really a to me, a very productive thing to do. But on the other hand, through our studies with John Gray, the men are from Mars, women are from Venus mm -hmm. guy, you know, men definitely do decompress, recharge from watching TV, from playing video games. But I do think that there's a happy medium. So great. Watch yeah. TV with your spouse. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully you like to watch the same stuff. Play games with your spouse. <laughs> and I remember this was something that we we um, had have had video games a couple times mm -hmm. in in the house, and there were only a couple couple times where it kind of became an issue. I think initially for women they might be like, "Oh, he's having fun," and um, I get my time to myself. But after a while. You know, we do miss you guys, you know. Mm -hmm. And another thing that I think there's a factor is just the noise. It's really, you don't tend to choose games that are really. Yeah, and th there's a problem there because if you're going to. So a lot of the games that you play, and I'm not a big gamer, so I don't spend hours and hours. And I, I don't even, can't even remember the last time I played the video game that I do have or the you know, the games I have on the console I have. Um, it's really good to put on headphones because you can hear everything in front of you and behind you. So if you're playing a, you know, a shooting game or sniper game, a, a whatever the, what they call first person shooter, um, you can hear things that you need to hear if you're actually gonna play really well. Mm -hmm. But if you put on headphones, then your spouse can't talk to you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it seems like you're ignoring your spouse if they're around, right? And if you're playing the game so you can hear your spouse, if if you happen to say, you know, John, and then I pause, I could pause the game. Can you come over here? And I could say, yeah, you know. And <laughs> your eyebrow raised. Like, did it? Yeah. Oh, I could say, right. yeah. yeah. Most of the time I probably wouldn't, but I could say <laughs> what from where I'm at because I can hear you. <laughs> So it's a double-edged sword for guys, you know. Do you put on the headphones mm. so you can really get into the game and not disturb your spouse, mm -hmm. but it seems like you're ignoring them? Mm -hmm. Or do you let the game roar because you need to hear what's going on? Because they make it, you know, these games nowadays are, are fully immersive. You know, you have to hear the sounds. Otherwise, you know, like if I was training for a game, which I don't do, I probably sound like I play a lot of games but I don't but I would actually play it without the sound for quite a bit of time so I'd get really good at just the visual and then I would then include the sound but anyway that's off topic <laughs> <laughs> you're allowed your tangents I had a few I'm trying to give some <laughs> advice but um, I would say you know if I was gonna, I, every time that I've done it that I've worn headphones I tell you I'm gonna put headphones on I won't be able to hear you yeah that's helpful it's very helpful because then there's nothing that I'm going to pay for, you know, in the sense of if you get upset with me, there's not going to be any problems between us. Mm -hmm. You know, I got headphones on. Plus, I was considerate in telling you. Mm -hmm. And these are some extremely subtle, nuanced ways of existing, but very helpful for a relationship. Mm 
Mm-hmm. And even sometimes when I, if I want to play, I don't, you know, because I know that it's time for me and you to be together because maybe I stayed late at work and I get home at seven or eight or whatever. And I have that long day and I am drained and I do desire that kind of time to get away, but I don't, I don't play the game. I'll go for a walk with you or do whatever we're going to do. Yeah. Well, and I recognize, too, that there may be times that you really do need to defrag by doing your guy stuff. You know, it's very considerate that you say, I go for a walk with you. But according to John Gray, the men are from Mars, women are from Venus. And his stuff makes a lot of sense, especially when you've been in a relationship for a while. You've seen a lot of the stuff come up that he talks about. You're then lending to my defrag system by going for a walk and talking. Mm-hmm. And... That I understand that doesn't always work for you. Well, yeah. I'm building a lasting relationship with you. Mm. You know, it's not about one day. It's not about every other day. It's about it's about every day all along the way. And you know, I'll get my time. You know, I'll get up early on a Saturday or something and watch a motocross or or play a video game or or do whatever research I'm going to do on the computer that's for my personal, you know, interests and things like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, yeah, I appreciate that. And that's not necessarily something that I think that you're consciously planning and doing. So mm. you're, totally. score, you're really scoring the brownie points. Totally. Tonight. Well, yeah. I have to take care of me because you can only do certain things to take care of me. I can only do certain things to take care of you. Mm-hmm. And those fill-in points, you're not responsible for me. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and you know, I, I take a heck of a lot more you know, I put a lot more stock in the fact that I'm responsible for you than I feel that you're responsible for anything for me. And so that's kind of our philosophy from the beginning. We didn't talk about this yet, but if each person gives 100%, then when one person is only capable of giving 50% or only has the time to do that, you still have, you know, 150, yeah, I'm doing, sorry, I'm hitting the table. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I'm, I'm showing percentages with my hands on the table my and hands you're are, jumping you're leapfrogging with your hands yeah so um then you still have 150 percent going into your relationship mm-hmm. you know and i'd rather have 200 percent going in but it's better than if each person gives 50 percent and then somebody's down on their 50 then you've got 75 percent going into your relationship mm-hmm. so and that might not make a lot of sense to anybody else but to you and I, it makes a lot of sense. We've talked about it a lot. Maybe we can do a whole podcast on that. Yeah. Well, I think the, the hidden blessing, too, of, of being able to have the time to talk so much. We actually do talk about a relationship. We do talk about these strategies, and which led us to think about, hey, why don't we podcast this? Mm-hmm. Because they seem to have really helped us over the years. You know, we've had to overcome things in a relationship. Doesn't mean it's always been easy, but we've found these solutions that have ended up working out. Right. Yeah. So real quick, because I, I, I personally really find it really interesting, not only to talk to you, because you're amazing. <laughs> Whoa, wow. Yeah. All right. But to get your perspective as a guy. I think it's it's interesting, and I assume that you're totally correct and speak for all men. <laughs> yeah. And I'm curious as what is it? I mean, at what? How much does it really recharge you to play a video game? I mean, John Gray talks about you know how men go to their cave and kind of thing, but that's interesting because there's virtually no adventure. Um, I think most men, at least the guys that I know and guys that I would hang out with, are very adventuresome. You know, most of my friends I don't actually hang out with because we're always doing things. So, you know, it's whether I'm working in my business, which is an adventure, you know, I'm creating, I'm, I'm questing, I'm looking forward into the future. I'm trying to find what I'm going to do to make, continue to make money. Um, and men need success. So to have failure after failure after failure is extremely defeating for a man and and failure can show up in what kind of ways i mean from what i've heard is 
you can look successful, but you are failing in your own right, you know, in your own thoughts, your my your your thought process of how you are, um, how you planned. You know, you planned to do something and it doesn't work out the way you wanted it to. So you you met 50% of your goal. That is an utter failure. I mean, a guy's not going to tell you that, that I failed. You, you're still going to look at him and go, wow, man, he's really doing it. He's successful. But the kind of guys that I'm around, you know, that is, if they don't meet their own expectations, that's a failure. So even just... A little, I mean, and if you talked about John Gray a couple times and they've done, you know, uh, studies on the human brain and, and your cyst, you know, your endocrine system, your hormone system, all these things and how they work. One point on a video game, one score on a video game increases testosterone, oxytocin, you know, all these different chemicals in your body. Your body goes on this positive spin of making these good hormones, good chemicals for you. And that's why a lot of people are addicted because it becomes addicting. Mm -hmm. There are rewards, but ultimately at the end of the day, you realize you didn't do anything. You know, you didn't go anywhere. There are people that make money with video games, obviously lots of money. Um, but for me, I don't, I'm not a professional gamer or anything else in that respect. So it's a quick burst of some fun. It's kind of, you know, you let go, you get to race a car, you know, knock another car off the road, race a motorcycle, you know, on the video games, you know, shoot something, smash into something. It's kind of fun. You know, you see little boys on the beach build sandcastles. What do they do immediately when they're done? They smash, they smash it, yeah. right? So that's a release. That's an exciting thing. You know, and they know they can do it again and they'll probably make it bigger next time because it'll be take longer to bust it down. It'll be more fun. Mm -hmm. And, you know, construction, destruction, rebuilding, thinking of something different. The guys need that. Well, and it's relatively risk free. I mean, it's not real life. A video game is very risk free, although I've played video games and used the headset and talked to people around the world while I'm playing. Mm -hmm. And I've heard a lot of really crazy stuff going on in the background uh, with women yelling at guys that are playing video games because you can hear everything that's in the room, mm -hmm. <laughs> everything that's going on. So what are you implying is the risk? Huh? What are you implying is the risk? Uh, well, that's a risk. Yeah. If you're going to play a video game and you're ignoring your significant other <laughs> there's a risk there that you don't want to take you know it's it's a bad risk because it's bad for your relationship mm -hmm. unless you're one of those couples that has one of those really volatile relationships and that's where they get their chemical production that's where they get their hormones raising mm -hmm. because they're fighting and then making up you mm -hmm. know and and that's a very addictive pattern also Another great subject. Yeah, for podcast. another podcast, right? <laughs> we what I think of often too is we don't have little kids running around or anything, and I so it's easier for you for me to say, you know, it looks like you've had a rough day. You know, go do your thing for a while, and we'll catch up later. But so many people come home; they're both coming home from work, mm -hmm. and they're trying to put dinner on. They're trying to do the laundry in between, some cleaning, the chores. And so I try to keep that in perspective that it's so, you know, we're pretty unique in that sense, time -wise. Well, everybody makes their choices. That's true. You know, yeah. people choose to live in the house they live in, drive the vehicles they drive, have the jobs they have, the amount of kids that they have, spend the money that they spend, and, you know, if you do too many things, you you well lose track and not be able to catch up. That's true. I was thinking today, you know, with with a few services that I do purchase, you know, like house cleaning, I could drive a new car. But I drive a 10-year-old car mm -hmm. that I maintain really well. And so we buy back our time by ha and provide jobs for other people by hiring them. And so, yeah, that's... And my vehicle's going on six years old. So, you know, it's not that we have to have brand new vehicles. Mm -hmm. You know, just nicely maintained used vehicles are fine. Right. 
that frees up a lot of cash. Yeah. <laughs> and usually you treat them well, we'll treat you well. Right. Yeah. Yeah, interesting stuff. That kind of, so you already kind of summed it up in the sense that, you know, people choose a life that they're in. I think what, you know, we've all been in tight times in life, whether it's financially, emotionally, you know, in relationships. And sometimes you do just have to grit through it, learn to develop a good attitude, seek help and get help where you can, and find the things that you can be grateful for. And sometimes it is, well, one of my mottos is definitely simplicity. Mm. Sometimes it is about simplifying in life. Because a few of the other things I had written down that I have heard, especially from other women, are, you know, you're definitely not the only guy who leaves clothes around. Um, but also women not getting help with the house or the kids or different things like that. And then, so those are kind of lumped in the taking an overall perspective of your life. If we're going to talk about house and kids and that kind of stuff, first of all, a woman needs to get the agreement from the guy that he's going to help. You know, nobody's obligated to do anything. It's a free country, you know, and, and the woman and the man, they're not obligated to stay with each other. So, you know, it's, it's a, it, you, you got to get the, the buy-in that someone's going to help. And then you got to be specific, mm -hmm. you know, can you help me clean the house? Sounds like a gigantic task that's going to take all day long. Mm -hmm. You know, can you, you know, can you clean the cat boxes? That's a specific request and that can be done. Then a guy will quantify that and go, oh, that's going to take me 15 minutes. No problem. Mm -hmm. I'll get it done. And I'll usually in the in that example, I'll ask today or in the mm. next couple days. Or you, well, here's what you say. You say, I have three things that I'd like you to do in the next few days if you have time. Mm -hmm. You know, you never demand. You don't get upset. You you just state it very plainly. And I say, oh, what are they? And they might, most of the time, they won't get done till the third day because you gave me a time frame and you gave, <laughs> you gave me the freedom <laughs> to true. choose. Yes. <coughs> Excuse me. And so I've learned to plan ahead. <laughs> right, right. And you might have wanted it done within a week, but you said three days and it got done sooner and that's fine. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and then you let me prioritize it. And generally I burn through those lists or those things so fast. You're like, wow, why didn't you do that sooner? And I'm like, yeah, I could have, in my own mind, I'm like, I could do that right now, but who cares? You know, and, and honestly, you know, I've, I've heard a lot of women ask their husbands or boyfriends to help with all these things and they they run down such a litany and they do it with such an aggressive and angry like you've never done this before or helped me before tone that it builds resentment right in the conversation and then you know the guy will find something else to do so is this stuff that you've heard like you've happened to have been present or like guy talk behind the scenes they're like my woman is saying this honestly again. I can't remember a time that we have been around a couple that I have not heard the wife nag on the man and at our house too so when people come over or when people I'm probably <laughs> we're, we're gonna, we're gonna get rid of all of our friends <laughs> <laughs> well we're not naming names <clears throat> no excuse and, me <clears throat> And you can take John to task because <laughs> yeah, you can talk to me about it. I'll help you out. So, but what is but I, I haven't I haven't heard that. Well, can you get this? Can you get this? You know, can you grab this? And it's not it's not oh, oh please can you help me with this? It's like did you get that? Did you get that out of the car? And there's such a connotation in the voice mm -hmm. that the guy and I know the guy is like screw you, you know, because you just did that in front of our friends. You just said that. And everybody's looking at me now like I never help you. Mm. Instead of the woman being pleasant, being nice, and asking like she really wants something. You know, I say if you're asking for something, ask like you really want it. And it's a very expensive thing that somebody's going to have to work really hard for. You know, honey, do you think I could get a new Cadillac? You know, honey, will you get the car seat for me? That really helped me out. You know, instead of... You didn't get the car seat yet? Good grief, we have to go. 
you know, and it's, and it's like, no one likes to be talked to. Right. And I'm not talking about our friends with kids. I'm just talking about generalities, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, and and it's always, I, I can't remember a time that we've been around other couples where I haven't heard the woman nag on the man. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I would, if I was the guy, I'd be like, we're not going out. You know, we're not, you can't talk to me like that in front of other people. And then I would say, you can't talk to me like that at home. You know, you have to be kind, reason with me, treat me like you care about me. And, you know, be polite. Well, it's common sense when it comes down to it. You know, you've been very particular about that in our relationship from the very beginning. But you also come from uh, parents who are very kind in a lot of ways in that way and oftentimes we do mirror how we were brought up yeah but that's that doesn't cut it i mean there's you don't you don't go to the hair salon and look at the woman and go will you do my hair already you know nobody talks like that to anybody else except their spouse and that blows my mind it blows my mind because you're living with someone you should you should care about them more than anybody else not feel like you can treat them however you feel. It's very true. And when we first started having these discussions between us, I was actually offended at first. I took it personally. <laughs> you know, you would, you, because I would do these things to you initially, and you would say, because we were at the very beginning of our relationship, and you made it really clear, you know, I will not be treated that way. Mm-hmm. And it took me a while to even understand what you were saying. Like, literally, it took me a while to understand the difference because it was so much a part of my training. And it was also part of my training to take it personally. Mm -hmm. That rather than you presenting to me your preference, what, what you've learned through your previous relationships and so forth, that I just got miffy right away. And well, it was you treat me how I treat you. That was the, the big thing that I would say to you. And so I, I gave you the opportunity to observe how wonderfully I treat you and for you to emulate that and say, oh, well, he was really kind to me when he asked me for that. Or he was, it was really nice that he took me to that place and, and we did those things, you know, and, and it was a very easy way to relate, mm-hmm. you know, how to treat somebody, not treat people how you would like to be treated. Because there's so many people out there that there's no way I'd want to be treated how they are okay being treated. Right. Where I was actually going further with that, too, is the next thing that's on my list. And we can probably close out with this one because it's a, it's a good one. Mm-hmm. And what I was emphasizing is your particularness about language. Mm-hmm. And... Being a person, I myself, who's very fond of language, learning other languages, and have noticed clearly how you change very slightly how something is said. You can completely and totally change the meaning. And one of the other gripes that I hear a lot from women are that he doesn't listen. And I think some, some of it is just men are wired differently in how they pay attention and, and communicate. And the other thing is, what was the other thing? <laughs> I think that's mainly I'm still it. listening. I, you are. <laughs> you, um, I think there, we all have certain makeups also. And I'm talking about different brands and all that kind of stuff <laughs> that I actually did videos on today. But we have different qualities. And some people just have, are more talented in those things. You come from a history of neuro-linguistic programming, which deals with language and and phys- IQs and so forth. You really have to pay attention. Oh, uh, martial yeah. arts. And, and just understanding the world for what it is. And taking, taking a person for what they say. You have read immensely. You have listened to many, many programs, audiobooks and so forth. So you have trained yourself. Given that, I'd like you to share a bit on your opinion of why do you think it's hard? Why do you think that 
there's a communication between men and women where men women don't think that men are listening. I don't I don't think there's a real I think the problem is stagnation. I think people people do everything they can to get a spouse or a significant other and then once they get them they stop. They got that person, you know, you see people let themselves go and I'm not I don't think everybody has to walk around with a six pack or a or buns of steel. You know, I think that people have to continue to move forward. They ha- the stagnation is the problem. If you stop growing and stop becoming, and a lot of times people hold each other in those places. So there's, you know, I fell in love with you. I would have been fine with you like you were for the rest of our lives together, you know, and other than, you know, some things that, you know, you might've wanted to change and, and maybe you were treating me away and I requested that you treat me differently, you know, and we've both done that with each other requested Mm -hmm. that but i think people stop growing and stop changing and don't better themselves you know they think if they get a better job that means they're a better person or they're a smarter person and that's not true you know you're you're virtually not going to become anything on the job you know and and you have to read and you have to study and you have to pay attention we have the the internet now and you know i mean just think it's, it's 2016. I got on the internet in 95-ish. I mean, mm-hmm. that's like no time, mm-hmm. you know, that we've had the internet. And most people think it's for music and porn mm-hmm. and or YouTube. And, and it's like, are you kidding me? Or now Pokemon, apparently. You can go anywhere in the world on your computer. You can learn any language you want to learn. You can learn things you don't want to learn. You can find out stuff you never knew existed. So how do you, how would you, are there any general tips you'd say to women to actually be able to communicate, like get the attention of their man? Act like you care and don't get bent out of shape. If you treat the man like a king, he can then treat you like a queen. And it sounds sexist, but it's the way it works. If, if a guy... You know, you, you do not, nobody wants to piss off their spouse. I don't want to piss you off. You don't want to piss me off. We made it all this way and you finally swore. Oh, I did. That's not a swear word. We <laughs> said we said pee earlier. You don't want to get peed off. <laughs> 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 well, we're getting real, well, you know. It's, it's. I think that's an excellent tip and a great way to sum up the podcast. And it goes both ways, you know. When you treat me like a queen, I love to treat you like a king. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't matter the dynamic dynamic of your relationship, you know. You know. Hundred percent from both sides. Right, and that's very very true. And I think fist bump for a great the way pound. To, the pound. The pound. <laughs> Mine was more like a rocket that. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, and, and in general, I mean, if we were all were like that more, you know, if we treated other people a lot better. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm really glad that uh, I had that conversation with my pedicurist, lovely lady, and that we developed it further in this podcast. I think there are really poignant things in relationships, and I find, found out new things. <laughs> that I didn't know that you were doing behind the scenes to earn brownie points. Now I can actually give you those brownie points. Uh, cause, because I care. Yeah. Well, you're pretty good at it, so. Thanks, hon. I'll catch you later. <laughs> <laughs> you going to chase me? <laughs> I know, you're not excited. I'm going to run. <laughs> Until next time. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Weight Free Wellness Podcast. You can find ways to connect with us on your favorite social media platform at weightfreewellness.com where you can share questions, like, and share your favorite podcasts. Thanks for listening. Take care. Bye-bye.